All right, so get this, an asteroid. Oh. Potentially the size of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It's on its way through our solar system. And get this. Okay. Initial observations are showing a one in 43 chance it could impact Earth in December 2032. Wow. Yeah, we're talking asteroid 2024 YR4, discovered just last December, not that long ago. And uh, we're diving deep today into reports from the ESA, NASA, and even some astronomers on social media who are uh, following this thing pretty closely. So are we really in danger or is this just going to be a close call? Well, it's certainly fascinating to consider the uncertainty surrounding this asteroid. Yeah, you're right. We don't want to jump to any conclusions. Uh, so what do we actually know about 2024 YR4 so far? Well, from what we've gathered, ground-based telescopes have given us an estimated size range for it somewhere between 40 and 100 meters wide. Whoa, okay, that's a pretty big range. Why is it so hard to get a more precise measurement? Well, you gotta imagine, trying to study like a pebble through a rushing waterfall. It's essentially what it's like trying to observe asteroids from Earth. Our atmosphere distorts the light coming from these objects, making it pretty difficult to get a really clear image. Oh, so it's like- So the larger the asteroid, the easier it is to spot and measure. Okay. But with smaller objects like 2024 YR4, there's a lot more room for error. Okay, so size definitely matters, but let's say it is on the larger end of that estimate. What kind of damage could an asteroid that size actually do? Well, let's take a look at the 1908 Tunguska event in Siberia, as an example. Okay. An object estimated to be around 40 meters in diameter exploded in the atmosphere, flattening over 80 million trees Whoa. over an area larger than London. That's incredible. This is what we call an airburst. And while the object itself didn't directly hit the ground, the shockwave was devastating. Millions of trees just wiped out from an airburst. Not even a direct impact. So if something like that happened today over a populated area... Well, the consequences would be catastrophic. The Tunguska event serves as a stark reminder of the destructive power even relatively small asteroids can possess. Remember, 2024 YR4 could be significantly larger than the object that caused Tunguska. Oh, wow. Okay, so if it did hit, what areas are potentially at risk here? From what we're seeing, current projections show a potential impact zone stretching across a significant portion of the globe. Okay. We're talking a band from northern South America across the Pacific Ocean to southern Asia and Africa. Some of the most populated regions of the world. Yes. That's a lot of people potentially in harm's way. And that's why accurate tracking and assessment of 2024 YR4's trajectory is so important. The more precise our data, the better we can understand the potential risk. Okay, so we've got this asteroid, potentially larger than the one that caused the Tunduska event, and its path could take it over some very populated areas. Is there anything else that we need to be aware of? Well, there is another less likely, but still possible scenario. Okay. A lunar impact. The odds are much smaller, around 0.3% but it's something scientists are monitoring. A moon impact, what would that even look like? Such an impact would be an incredible spectacle. It would release energy equivalent to 340 Hiroshima bombs. Wow. Creating a new crater on the lunar surface and likely being visible from Earth with the naked eye. Wow, that would be something to see, but would it pose any danger to us here on Earth? The likelihood of any substantial lunar material being ejected back towards Earth and causing a major threat is extremely low. So while a lunar impact would be a significant event, scientifically and visually, the direct risk to Earth is minimal. Okay, so we've got this asteroid out there and we're not entirely sure where it's gonna end up, but surely we're not just sitting here waiting for it to hit something, are we? Thankfully, we're not passive observers in this scenario. Okay, good. Astronomers have submitted an urgent request to utilize the James Webb Space Telescope to observe 2024 why R4? The James Webb Space Telescope. Isn't that the most powerful telescope we've ever launched into space? It is. What could that do for us in this situation? Well, the James Webb Space Telescope is a game changer in astronomy. Its advanced optics could provide us with significantly more accurate data about 2024 YR4. We're talking precise measurements of its size, composition, and most importantly, its trajectory. So the James Webb could be the key to figuring out whether 2024 YR4 is a real threat or just a cosmic close shave? Yes, the data we receive from the James Webb could potentially eliminate the risk altogether or confirm the need for further action. Either way, it will be a major step forward in our understanding of this asteroid. Okay, that's reassuring, but even if this particular asteroid turns out to be harmless, it seems like planetary defense is becoming a more serious topic, right? Absolutely. We can't just rely on luck to avoid these things forever. You're absolutely right. In fact, China is taking this very seriously. 
actively recruiting for a dedicated planetary defense force. A planetary defense force? What does that even entail? They're looking for the best and brightest minds, individuals with advanced degrees in fields like astrophysics, aerospace engineering, and related disciplines. Wow. The goal is to develop and implement strategies to detect, track, and potentially deflect asteroids that pose a threat to Earth. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but this is real life. It seems like 2024 YR4, whether it hits us or not, is serving as a wake-up call. It certainly highlights the importance of being prepared and investing in the resources and expertise necessary to protect our planet. The discovery of 2024 YR4 has brought the issue of planetary defense to the forefront, and it's something we need to take seriously. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about Asteroid 2024 YR4 and uh, the possibility of it hitting Earth or the Moon. It's kind of unsettling to think that there are these giant space rocks out there that could potentially do so much damage, but it sounds like scientists are on top of it, right? Absolutely. The discovery of 2024 YR4 is really just one example of the ongoing work being done to detect and track near-Earth objects. Astronomers around the world are constantly searching the skies for anything that could pose a potential threat. So how do they even find these things? It seems like looking for a needle in a haystack. Space is huge. You're not wrong. The vastness of space makes this task incredibly challenging, but thankfully we have some incredibly powerful tools at our disposal. Okay. Telescopes like the Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System, or PANSTARS for short, are constantly scanning the night sky. PANSTARS, that name sounds familiar. I remember reading something about it being located in Hawaii, is that right? You have a great memory. PANSTARS is actually a system of telescopes located on the island of Maui in Hawaii. What makes PANSTARS so impressive is its ability to scan vast portions of the sky very quickly. Mm. It takes images of the same area of the sky multiple times per night, looking for anything that moves differently than the background stars. So it's like taking a time-lapse video of the sky and looking for anything that's out of place. That's a great way to think about it. And because PANSTARS can detect very faint objects, it allows us to spot asteroids when they're still quite far away, giving us more time to react. In fact, it's one of the world's leading instruments for discovering near-Earth objects. That's reassuring to know. So let's say we do find an asteroid on a collision course with Earth. What are our options? Is it like in the movies where we just nuke it? Well, Hollywood loves good asteroid nuking scene. In reality, that's not the ideal solution. Blowing up an asteroid would likely create a shower of smaller fragments oh. where it could still be dangerous and difficult to track. Okay, so nuking is off the table. What are some of the more realistic options for planetary defense? One of the most promising methods is called kinetic impact. Hmm. Essentially, it involves crashing a spacecraft into the asteroid at high speed to alter its trajectory. So kind of like a cosmic billiards shot? Exactly. The idea is that even a small nudge if done early enough, can significantly change an asteroid's path, causing it to miss Earth altogether. Have we ever tried this before? Has kinetic impact actually been tested? Yes. NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, successfully demonstrated this concept last year. They sent a spacecraft crashing into a small asteroid called Dimorphos, and it worked. Wow. They were able to measurably change its orbit. That's incredible. So we actually have proof that we can deflect asteroids. The DART mission was a monumental achievement in planetary defense. It proved that kinetic impact is a viable strategy for protecting our planet. That's great news. But what about those smaller, darker asteroids like 2024 YR4? Aren't they harder to spot, even with powerful telescopes like pan stars? That's true. Smaller asteroids are more difficult to detect. That's why there's a continuous push for improved detection technologies. New ground-based surveys like the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, or ATLAs, are coming online all the time. And there are even space-based telescopes, like NEOWISE, that are specifically designed to hunt for asteroids. NEOWISE, that's another name I've heard before. What's special about that telescope? NEOWISE is a space telescope that observes the sky in infrared light. This allows it to see the heat signature of asteroids, mm. making them stand out against the cold background of space. It's particularly good at finding those smaller, darker asteroids that might be missed by ground-based telescopes. So it's like a heat-seeking missile for asteroids. You could say that Neowise has already discovered thousands of previously unknown asteroids, including many that come relatively close to Earth. So it seems like there's this whole network of telescopes, both on the ground and in space, working together to keep an eye out for these potential threats. That's exactly right. It's a global effort with scientists and engineers from many different countries working together 
to protect the planet. The discovery and tracking of asteroids is a collaborative endeavor with data being shared and analyzed across borders. It's amazing to think about the level of international cooperation that's happening behind the scenes to keep us safe from these cosmic dangers. It really puts things into perspective. It really does. The threat posed by asteroids reminds us that we're all in this together. We share a common planet and a common destiny. Okay, so we've talked about how we find these asteroids and some of the techniques we might use to deflect them if necessary. But what about the human side of all this? Let's say we knew for certain that an asteroid was gonna hit Earth. What would that do to us, psychologically and socially? I mean, talk about a global crisis. You've raised a critical question, and it's one that deserves careful consideration. These psychological and societal impacts of such an event are difficult to predict, but it's safe to say that it would be unlike anything humanity has ever faced. Welcome back to the deep dive. Before the break, we were talking about uh, the global effort to track asteroids and the mind-blowing technology being used to potentially deflect them, but it's hard not to wonder what would happen to society if we knew for certain that an asteroid was going to hit Earth. It's a question that really goes beyond science and technology. Delving into the realm of human psychology and sociology, how would we react individually and collectively to the knowledge of an impending cosmic disaster? I mean, think about it knowing there's this giant space rock hurtling towards us with the potential to cause such widespread destruction. It's like something out of a disaster movie. Well, the reality is predicting human behavior in such a scenario is complex. Yeah. There's really no one-size-fits-all answer. Some individuals might succumb to panic and despair, while others might find strength and resilience in the face of adversity. Yeah, you're probably right. People would react in all sorts of different ways. Some might try to deny it's even happening, while others might go into like survival mode. It's hard to imagine how society as a whole would function. Think about the social and economic implications. Would people continue to go to work? Would governments be able to maintain order? Would there be a surge in actualism? Or would we see a rise in selfishness and chaos? These are all questions that social scientists and psychologists are really grappling with. So are there any historical events or studies that might give us some clues about how we might respond to an asteroid threat? Well, it's tricky because there's really no historical precedent for an event of this magnitude. Yeah. But we can look at how societies have reacted to other large-scale disasters, like earthquakes, tsunamis, or pandemics. Yeah, I guess those events could offer some insights. We've seen both incredible acts of heroism and heartbreaking instances of lawlessness in those situations. It seems like a lot would depend on the specific circumstances, like the scale of the threat and how much time we had to prepare. Exactly, and leadership would play a crucial role. Clear, decisive, and compassionate leadership would be essential to guide society through such a challenging time. So let's say we did have some warning, maybe a few years or even a decade before an impact. What steps could we take to prepare both practically and psychologically? Well, on a practical level, we'd need to focus on mitigation and adaptation, building shelters, stockpiling resources, developing emergency response plans, and investing in technologies that could potentially deflect the asteroid. It sounds like a massive undertaking. And what about the psychological side? How could we prepare people mentally and emotionally for something like this? That's where open and honest communication becomes really crucial. We need to provide accurate and timely information to the public, address their concerns, and offer psychological support. Fostering a sense of community and shared purpose would be essential. It sounds like we'd need to draw on the best of humanity, our ingenuity, our resilience, and our capacity for cooperation. It's a bit daunting, but also strangely inspiring in a way. It's a reminder of our shared vulnerability, but also our potential for greatness. Faced with such a challenge, we might see the emergence of new technologies, social structures, and ways of thinking that could transform our world. This whole conversation has been a wild ride. We've gone from a potential city-destroying asteroid to the depths of human psychology and the future of our species. 